We start by applying the first convolution, CV1, to the input X and store the result in a list Y. Then each module in M processes the most recent output and their results are appended to Y. All these outputs are concatenated along the channel dimension and pass through the second convolution, CV2. If a residual scaling factor gamma is defined, it scales the output and adds it back to the input X. Otherwise, the result Y is returned as is. And this brings us to one of the main innovations of YOLO 12, the residual efficient layer aggregation network. As we saw earlier, the authors highlight this in both the paper's introduction and expand on it later in more technical detail. Let's now bridge their generic diagram with our specific architecture. At the top of the block, we can see a residual path that connects the input directly to the output of the entire module. The scaling factor gamma is a learnable weight vector optimized during training to control how much of the residual input is mixed into the final output. You can think of this as a gating mechanism, allowing the model to decide how much new information to inject versus how much of the original signal to preserve. This mechanism helps with gradient flow and training stability. Now, in our nano architecture, we have two sets of two area blocks instead of the three shown in the generic diagram. These A blocks are chained, which means the output of one feeds into the next, gradually refining the feature maps at each step. This setup allows the block to gather progressively richer feature representations before combining them. One important note, in the original diagram, the authors didn't explicitly show the final projection layer, CV2, but it is used and essential nonetheless. After concatenating the outputs from the different A blocks, CV2 is used to reduce the number of channels, keeping the model efficient and well-balanced. Also, remember that this residual connection with gamma scaling is only present in the large and extra-large models. For the nano model, this connection is not present, so the output comes directly from the fused feature maps with no residual added. So before we move forward, let's take a moment to appreciate why the overall A2C2F block is so powerful. First, it uses one-by-one -one convolutions to transform and mix channel information, allowing the network to combine features across channels without affecting spatial resolution. Then it applies area-based attention to focus on the most relevant spatial regions, for example, around object boundaries or in texture-rich zones. Then it chains multiple transformations, allowing each stage to build on the previous one and refine the output even further. And finally, when enabled, it adds a residual connection with learnable scaling, preserving essential input features that might otherwise be lost. The result, a feature representation that is both detailed and context aware, exactly what you need for robust object detection. While we've explored the A block at a high level, it's time to dive deeper and understand what's actually happening inside. This is where we're heading next, into the A block itself. According to the module's doc string, this block combines an area attention mechanism with a feed-forward network to process the input feature maps. This area-based attention offers a novel and more efficient alternative to traditional self-attention mechanisms. So let's begin by looking at what exactly feeds into this block. Our first argument to the A block is the number of dimensions, in this case 64, which corresponds to the number of input channels. Next is 2, for the number of heads into which the attention mechanism is divided. We also pass in 2 for the MLP ratio, a float that controls the expansion factor for the hidden dimension inside the MLP. We will touch on this shortly. Finally, we set the area to 4, which defines how the feature map is divided for area-based attention. These three values, dim, number of heads, and area, are used to initialize the area attention module. Instead of full self-attention, which as we saw in the paper, is computationally expensive for images, this module uses a more efficient area-based attention. Next, we compute the hidden dimension for the MLP by multiplying the input dimension by the MLP ratio. Since the input dimension is 64 and the MLP ratio is 2, the hidden dimension becomes 128. We then define the MLP, which is a simple two-layer convolutional feed-forward network. 
The first convolution expands the number of channels from 64 to 128, and the second projection reduces it back down to 64 with the activation function disabled. This layout mirrors the standard transformer block design. Attention followed by an MLP, but it's optimized here for vision tasks like object detection. Finally, the block initializes all convolutional weights using a truncated normal distribution with a standard deviation of 0.02. This means the weights are sampled from a normal distribution centered at zero, but instead of allowing extreme values, the distribution is truncated, typically at plus minus two standard deviations. Truncating helps avoid large initial weights that could destabilize training, especially in residual structures like our A block, where stable early activations are crucial. If a convolution has a bias term, it's initialized to zero. Zero initialized biases ensure no artificial offset is introduced at the beginning. The model will learn any necessary bias during training. This careful initialization strategy contributes to the stability and effectiveness of attention-based models like vision transformers and YOLO 12, even when they include deep and complex modules. Now, let's walk through the visualization of the A block's forward pass, which is fairly straightforward. It defines how the input tensor X flows through the A block module. We begin with the area attention module, which processes the input and extracts spatial relationships. The result is then added back to the original input, forming a residual connection. This helps improve gradient flow and stabilize training, which is a common technique in deep learning models. Next, the output is passed into the MLP module, which, as we saw earlier, expands the channel dimension and then projects it back down. And once again, a residual connection adds the MLP's output back to its input. This brings us to another innovation introduced in YOLO 12, the configurable MLP expansion ratio. This design choice helps balance the computational load between the attention mechanism and the feed-forward network, leading to better overall performance. As noted in the paper, both in the introduction and in the ablation studies section, while vision transformers typically use an MLP ratio of 4, YOLO 12 shows that larger models benefit from using a smaller ratio, like 1.2, while smaller models, such as our nano model here, work best with a ratio of 2. That's why you see a channel expansion factor of 2 in this block. Now that we've carefully walked through the steps of the A block, we're finally ready to dive into what is arguably the most important innovation in the entire YOLO 12 algorithm, the area attention. As the name suggests, this module implements an area-based attention mechanism that processes input features in a spatially aware manner, preserving high precision while enabling more efficient attention computation. So what are the input arguments to this module? First, the number of dimensions or hidden channels, which is 64 in our case, then the number of heads, the attention mechanism is divided into, which is two. And finally, the number of areas, the feature map is split into, which is four. If we plug these values into the class and assign them to its instance variables, we can derive the parameters that will be passed into the three convolution layers inside the area attention block. The QKV convolution, the positional encoding convolution, and the final projection convolution. Notice that all of these are linear convolutions with no activation functions applied. We'll go through each convolution in detail. But first, let's look at how the attention mechanism is structured and how these convolutions fit into it.